What's up? I don't feel like waiting around. Six minutes, way too long. Way too long, as far as I'm concerned. Hello, everybody. Florencia, Caleb, Casing, Rappy, Disc Breaker, Auster, Elif, Stefan. Rappy, Caleb, Austin, Auster. Casing, Caleb, Auster, Florencia, Rappy. Hello, everyone. Let's draw. It's been a... Uh, been a crazy few days. I got an apartment. It finally happened. I am finally moving. That was, uh, it's kind of a lot there. Freaking New York. But I'm very glad of that. People who have been watching stream for a while know I've been trying to move for, oh, what? I think I've been trying to move for like eight months now or something like that. I think it's something around there. Sorry, just fixing my mic. So that's finally happening. I'm beat after it though, I'm tired. It was so much back and forth. I was like, we're gonna get it, we're not gonna get it, we're gonna get it, we're not gonna get it, we're gonna take it, we're not gonna take it. It was just crazy. Thank you, thank you everybody. So, um, unfortunately, no, well, fortunately, unfortunately, but that means that I will be doing the holidays, which I personally already find very stressful. <laughs> I find Christmas very stressful, but I'm going to be doing the holiday preparations and moving at the exact same time. I'll be moving at the end of this month. So um, I'm sorry if I wind up being a little quieter than usual this month, if I stream less or anything like that, but I got a lot to do to get ready to move. I'm sure there will be a stream or two where the only thing in my apartment is my desk and my computer, and that's it, and everything else is gone. <laughs> Packed away in boxes, ready to go. I don't know what I'm drawing today. I just needed to, I need to chill with whatever, you know, make absolutely whatever. Or did you finally move to the distant star Algol, like you said? Nope. I'm only moving about less than two miles away from where I live now. But in New York, two miles away can be a completely different world. But it looks like my New York City moving journey in these crazy housing markets is over for now. To all of my New York friends who are trying to move in this insane market, I send you my sympathies. I know, I now know firsthand just how insane it is. Hey Tim. Welcome, welcome at the beginning of stream. My young apprentice, you must understand, the stream is most potent right at the beginning. It would behoove the youthful practitioner to make sure that they are at the stream as early as possible. I see, unfortunately, that you've been tardy many times. No, no, they'll never accept this at the high concock of great sorcerers. No, no, no. I'm afraid you won't be able to join our ancient brotherhood if you keep acting this way. Mm -hmm. I 
I gotta move my camera back. Why do you continue to live in New York since you work online and you said your whole family moved to Florida? Well, my side of my family moved to Florida, but my wife's family is still here, my in-laws. And um, I just don't, I don't wanna live in Florida. That's just a personal thing, not my kind of place. You guys have heard me complain before, I wilt in the heat. It's like a place that's always hot and humid. No, that's, yeah, I'm not moving there. Definitely not where I wanna live. My sister and my mom, they love that. You know, they just wanna spend all day melting in the sun. That's not me. Let me check my focus here, folks. Oh, now my little camera's, my camera's little dangler is showing. He 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 he. Oh. What could I have meant by that? What what did I what do I honestly think I'm implying there? I'm calling it a dangler. Hold on, I gotta move my setup such that I can get my camera out of the shot. All right, there we go. Now I already forgot if I checked my focus. Yeah, it's fine. Hello, what's up? Nothing much. Drawing, relaxing. You all know you need to draw and relax, right? It's a very important to draw and relax. Milton's demons would love Florida. Those guys love heat, yeah. Seest thou yon dreary beach, seat of thong underwear? Once I'm done moving though, it'll be winter. Winter in New York, my high productivity season. It's when I regain all of my lost strength that I lose through heat transfer to the very atmosphere around me in summer. Surely you guys will see some crazy stuff from me then. Autumn Rose says, you should have seen modern day James stream today. He basically went off on Proco for his AI opinions. Wow. Do I smell trouble in paradise? What? Drama in the art community? I don't believe it. I'm sure James was very measured. <laughs> yeah, the AI stuff is crazy, right? I mean, it definitely... Um, threatens to turn us all against each other if it goes in particular ways, but we must not allow that to happen. Tim says, Stephen, I'd like to thank you for the Black Friday sale. I was finally able to get the course. I'll only start the exercises next year though. No free time at the moment. Hey, no problem. Whenever you're ready to go, we're there waiting for you. Thank you for the support. Thanks for picking up the course. Kind of crazy, huh? I'm getting thanked for a Black Friday sale? Come on. <laughs> I should be thanking you. And so I will. Thank you everyone for making the Black Friday sale such a success. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad to have so many people checking out the course, doing the assignments, experiencing it building the community, helping each other. A lot of people from all sorts of interesting backgrounds in there. 
They're all learning from each other, or learning from the stored feedback on everybody else's assignments. I would say the overall assignment quality is shooting up just because people are starting at like a higher baseline because they can go back and read all of my previous feedback on previous assignments. Um, I've also learned a lot. That's uh, been really, really, really great for me. Uh, having to review these base exercises, not just to do the curriculum, to make the demo, um, not just there, but to critique the base exercises many, many times and to see like, I don't know how to put this, like new mistakes that I would never make just because that part of the process is sort of internalized. I make my mistakes elsewhere in the process. Seeing mistakes in those other parts of the process that I don't really think about has really made me understand the material better just for me, um, it's been wild, you know? It's, I mean, I wouldn't say that was unexpected, you know, I, I've been teaching long enough that I know you're always learning from the students, but um, it's, um, it's definitely been very pointed, you know? I, I feel like it's just continuing to refine my understanding more and more. And then there's just some people have submissions that just literally teach me. I've seen a few, I've seen a few submissions where I'm just like, oh, that's better than my demo. Cool, tight. That's nice to see. As a teacher, it's very nice to get one back where you're just like, huh, that should just like be the demo <laughs> for the course. Gotta move my lights, my light. I get my, my hand shadows are getting too strong. Eh, it looks a little better. Mel says, the feedback on everyone has literally been my daily reading. So incredibly helpful, Steven, top tier course. Mel, I'm so glad you think so. I'm glad you're doing it, man. You're enjoying it, man. Keep up the good work. It's not in there. Tim says, I took a look at the transformational anatomy part though. Great content. Do you think you'll continue that on the future? Torso, heads, back, hands, feet, horns, private parts, LOL. Yes, I will. I do intend on continuing it. Uh, not that many parts, but um, I was, I've always planned on doing um, torso and head and hands. I think I would probably combine head and hands. So I think it would be like two more sections.
Hello, Yoga. With the new Transformers on the horizon, do you think there's any chance we'll get a third addition to the new Alien movies, being as they both had both had last films in 2017? Um, I I had heard they wouldn't. I, I I remember I was watching some analysis of the updated Alien franchise, and the analysis that I heard based you know director interviews and stuff like that made a pretty compelling case for kind of like how they were done for now. But um, I hope they're wrong because. Um, I just love that world, uh, Prometheus, Covenant. I would I wouldn't say I particularly um, love them. Like it's not exactly you know I didn't think they were as good as the uh, as Alien and Aliens or anything. Um, I didn't, but forget that. It's like I didn't think they were like there was some stuff that bugged me about those movies. I didn't think they were great movies, but um, I'm just such a fan of that world and the concepts behind it and how wild it is that. Um, it doesn't really matter. I still really like those movies. I would love to get another edition. I just really like uh, those kinds of concepts, you know, like the panspermia stuff and um, ancient civilizations that have been doing work on a galactic scale. Like, there's... There's a few other franchises and properties that are sort of dealing with those concepts either in a fun, cool way, like the comic book movies, of course, or in a funny way. But that's like the only one that like is dealing with it in a really like serious way where it's not like making fun of itself or saying that it's silly. And uh, I like that. I like that tone. How's my volume? Do I sound loud enough? I got too lazy to put my mic in its usual position. Do you have any recommendations for books or other resources on optics? <laughs> you get the course, dude. First section in the course definitely explains the basics of optics, how light works, what light is, at least in, you know, as it pertains to artists. Understanding specular and diffuse reflection, the compression of the light based on how the photons interact with a form surface. Classic stuff. And I actually don't, you know, I made that section because I thought that particular collection of that information was kind of hard to find. I actually don't have a great other resource for that particular focused version of that information. Um, Scott Robertson's How to Draw definitely has it in there a bit but it kind of moves on from it quickly. And I think he kind of like, I think the book kind of assumes, assumes some of the stuff, unfortunately. Like, I don't think there's anywhere in how to draw or how to render where it, you know, it gives you a lot of detailed information about rendering, but it never quite explains like you're supposed, that you're supposed to compress the light or why, if I remember correctly. Um, for more color and painting stuff, Gurney's Color and Light is the go-to, but that's more of a, in my opinion, that book is more of a reference book where it's like, it's organized around particular lighting situations that appear in pieces you're working on and you're supposed to sort of crack it open when you start a new piece. At least that's how I interpret it. So it's like, all right, I got a new piece where it's gonna be a cloudy day you go to the cloudy day section of color and light and let James remind you what the nature of that lighting scenario is when compared to others.
How did my camera wind up back in shot? Wait, is that a wire? What is that? What is that? What the heck is it? Ah, really? There's this program called Evolve Artists. I don't know if I should choose that or Stevens Chorus. Has anyone gotten ads about Artists Evolve? I've heard of them, but I do not know the, I have not looked into the product myself. I think, I think they asked once to do a partnership with me. They were like, they do something where they'll um, give you like the, the course access to the course and like a bunch of materials for free i think if you'll sort of like document your journey on youtube and i was like what you really think i'm gonna do that it's like you got me figured out all wrong if you think i'm gonna sit here painting spheres for someone else's benefit you got me figured out all wrong that ain't it at all, man. If I'm doing spheres, it's for my benefit, baby. And the reason for that is quite simple. I'm a bad dude. Just a bad guy. Bad, inconsiderate, selfish, narcissistic. Just, oh God, the camera. Weenus is back because I thoughtlessly moved my rig. This is what I get for, I'm just, I need two webcams. I realize that now. Now I'm looking at the situation. I see that I actually just need two webcams. Cause you see, guys, let me just explain. All right, let me just explain. When I work digital, I put the webcam right in front of me, looking at me from over the top of my main monitor. And I look straight into the camera. But when I work traditional, I can't do that because my drawing overhead cam blocks the view from the webcam. So I move it over to the side. That's why I look at you from an angle. And then every time that I move it, it winds up in a slightly different spot. All of my mass and everything are all messed up because I can never quite get it back in the exact same spot because it's on like this sticky robot arm kind of a thing. And now I just realized I just need two. I need to get two. And I just use one for one situation, one for the other, and I never move them. My wife will love that. My wife's like, if you add one more wire to this home, I'll murder you. She's ready to end not just my life, but her life with a murder charge. If I add one more wire to our home. And I gotta admit, I kind of understand where she's coming from. It's a lot of wires. How do you clean a blending stump when it's dirty? You don't, I don't. I use them until they fall apart and then I just get a new one, grab a new one. I never clean them. I think I once tried, I tried to like cut it to get down to clean paper, but that actually just makes it unravel, makes it come apart, at least in my experience. Yeah, I don't clean them.
I was just watching a background, I was just watching a recorded stream. Thanks for the never ending background entertainment. No problem, Luna. Happy to be background entertainment. Nick Ravioli says, all you need is to move your camera, try a different perspective. Have you tried a biblically accurate angle? I think I'm gonna have to try a biblically accurate, a biblically accurate angle. Try saying that five times fast. Biblically accurate angle, biblically accurate angle, biblically accurate angle, biblically accurate angle, biblically accurate angle. She sells seashells by the seashore. Sixth sick sheiks, sixth sheep sick. Tips to overcome the syndrome of the same face from imagination, Stephen. I got a whole assignment and chapter about that in the course. Would you believe it? But to sum it up for you, work in a cast. Don't just draw one face. You just need to give yourself uh, drawing criteria that demand different faces that communicate different things so you've seen me draw on a cast in previous streams like doing entire character lineups you just do the same thing with just the faces you do that long enough you'll be good to go Anthony Jones with the wink in the heart. Got to support your organically made art, you know? Bless you, AJ. How you doing, man? Hope all is well, brother. Organically made art, it's real. Homegrown here in the city of Zion. It is the Jones this is my personal YouTube. Don't let people find out, AG. They'll swarm you over there on your personal YouTube. We can't let them know. Keep them all on robot pencil. The rabid fans will find you. Let me zoom in, zoom in up here a bit. Steven, do you use thick blending stuffs like Elisa Ivanova? And if you do, do those also come apart with time? I guess one also uses them less. I did used to. I did used to. Um, I still have them, and I will use them every now and then, but um, Elisa's work is a little bit more broad than mine. She really lets like the impressionistic um, smudge strokes do a lot of work in her drawings. I'm what you call, what's the word? Uh, a graceless hack. That's right, that's the word. 
uh, a graceless hack and I finish my drawings via brute force and detail to overwhelm the viewer. Uh, so because I don't have Elisa's grace, a smaller blending stub works for me because I'm gonna reduce everything down to these minutia of details anyway. AJ says, doing great. Just watched a long form video on AI. So good and well-spoken. Thanks, man. I'm glad you liked it. It's out there, it's doing the work. There's some interesting stuff going on. Uh, I just had a talk with um, Mache Kuchiara, who I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. He's been in the entertainment world a lot. He's got a podcast that he's been on hiatus uh, with for a while, but um, it's coming back and I had a talk with him about the AI stuff just recently. That'll be coming out soon, I think. There's Ed in it. Etting in it. My my res, my video res, my response video would just be streaming his video. You know, I tried to pack it. AJ also has videos of his game dev journey on there. Man, that's quite a journey, dude. I've always been very impressed by you, AJ, and just how, you know, everybody's capable of picking up and learning new things, but is everybody willing <laughs> to pick up and learn new things all the time? And you've just always been exceptionally willing. When I saw you start posting your game dev stuff, um, it was pretty crazy how how quickly it started looking, um, how else to put it, but uh, like it was gonna be a real thing, like it was a real game. Very cool, man. You have a small smudge on your lens? Don't lie to me. Don't tell me that. I'll freak out, I can't live like that. No, is it this thing? That's just I can't get my camera position right today. I'm too much of a nerd. Too much of a nerd to deal with a smudge on my lens. He just says, love you, brother. Miss our journeys in Japan and New York. Should do it again sometime. Got to get back to work. Go kill him, AJ. Go do the work that inspires so many. I miss it too, man. Those were great times. I'm sure we will do it again. I'm sure it will happen again very soon. Now that the world's gotten back to normal. At least, you know, on the whole going places and seeing people thing. Not normal in the other respects. But... Good luck with your work, man. Go kill it. Good to talk with you. Guillermo Anjo says, if you were starting your career nowadays, would you spend your time learning digital art, taking AI into consideration? Hmm. Ma'am, that's a good question. Um, I think counterfactuals like that are really difficult to answer. Um, I actually have no idea. But the other thing is that I was like a completely different person back when I started, because I started really young, right? I mean, I started getting interested in digital art like before I was 15. And I was just a completely different person. I think back then, if I had like the same youthful personality and AI was around, I think probably I wouldn't have learned digital. I think I probably would have stayed traditional, but um, that also means that maybe I wouldn't have um, gone into commercial art. 
I don't know. All right, I see people mentioning it. Yeah, let's see what's going on here. I think we can't make an ethical AI without removing the image to image thing. Um, probably not. I mean, the thing is that image to image as a function has so many, such a wide variety of things you could use it for, but it's like, but generally I agree. I mean, as it stands, the entire model you know, down to its weights is is ill-gotten and ill-made. So, you know, any derivative function like image to image is just, you know, they all need to get stripped down. You know, it's all going to be affected by a redo or anything like that. So yeah, I generally agree. Oh, Kusiar is a great artist to get opinions from because I imagine he's quite into the AI generation in terms of efficiency in a photo bash derivative, him and Jama Jurabev. Um, I mean, I got to tell you, I mean, my, I think you guys will really like the conversation with Mache. Um, he's taking it real slow on all that stuff. I mean, he's concerned like everybody else is. Um, it was a very good conversation. You guys will like it when it comes out. I think, and I think um, Mache really likes the process of learning and making things by hand. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't want to spoil the podcast too much or anything, but Mache is very, very concerned about the data stuff and where all of this is going. I'm not sure about Jama's position. Yeah, like AJ's saying, you know, they're incredible painters, artists. I mean, they're... They're sort of a different part of the equation, you know, someone who's on Jama's level, um, Mache's level, it's like, they're kind of always going to, they're very discerning people who are already used to deciding where a tool's influence begins and ends, right? So, whereas for the vast majority of people, commercial enterprises and things like that, these will be replacements for artists and they're intended that way. Um, in the hands of a high-end creative like those two, they're already used to cutting tools off that we would consider to be less worrisome or something like that. Like they, they're gonna use a pencil when it's right to use a pencil. They're gonna use a digital when it's right, digital when it's right to use digital. They're gonna use 3D when it's right to use 3D. Like they're sort of, you know, they're tough things to draw comparisons with. And I don't think necessarily that the way people with such broad skill sets like that use it is really, the best litmus test for what's right and what's wrong here. Steve, I missed you. I am back. How long was I gone? I streamed last week, right? I got a, I got a new apartment. It took a long time, people, but I, I finally sealed the deal on a new apartment. That was really hectic. That was the last few days, uh, but we wrapped it yesterday. We locked it in yesterday. Now I got to move. Great. Thank you for this stream, Steven, no problem. Hi Steve, is it possible to sell art before turning 18? People who see my art like it, but it's difficult to sell it to them even when they want it, really. Of course it is, I mean, you, you could sell art anytime. It's just, when do you have a buyer? It's whenever you actually have a buyer. Um, people like art a lot. People really do like art a lot, but the vast majority of people who like art will never buy it. They're not interested in like buying an original or something like that. It's, you've got to find, that's a very special kind of person. A lot of the high, most high-end artists in the world who sell fine art and things like that, 
they really are they are sustained by a small group of collectors, not a vast group of collectors. You know, if you have a lot of prints and things like that, you'll have a vast number of buyers. But if what you're trying to sell is like traditional art, like fine art style, like pieces for significant money, most people who do that are sustained by 10, if they're lucky, really committed collectors who will pay them the top dollar for that thing. So. If it's not happening yet, it's just because you're so young that you haven't really built that relationship yet with the people who will be your collectors. So be patient. It will happen, you know? Um, I'm getting distracted here. I don't know what I'm drawing. I just miss... When, whenever I haven't been on stream for a while, I always just want to talk because I miss chatting. Um, you know what? I've been wanting to practice more with the uh, dip pen. So let me... Get my dip in. And let me close close a window. One second. I left a window open in the other room. It's so loud here, folks. But let me tell you, the new apartment, it's going to be quiet. Yep. That's right, people. It's going to be good for stream. It took a long time, but I finally found it. An apartment, a good apartment on a one-way street that's being crossed by another one-way street. I mean, it's New York City. It's only so quiet, I guess. But I would estimate it's between 1,000 and 1 billion times more quiet than it is here. Whenever we went to go see an apartment, I'd always stand outside for a while just like this. Listening. All right, let me dip pen these things a bit. I've been interested in practicing with the dip pens again. They've never been my personal choice for ink work, but uh, I just, you know, you see so much good stuff with them. I've always intended, like, I gotta get in there and crack that nut. Finally, Steven is gonna stop complaining about the passing truck. What you gotta hope is that there's not some new mystery concern at this place. And I just start complaining about that. I'm just like, I can't get these rats to stop crawling all over my body whenever I'm streaming. I'm wearing a coat of rats. I'm inundated in rats. For the love of God, somebody get the rats off me. Ah, they're crawling on me. Ah, they're putting their little, little skin tails in my mouth now. What ink you using? This is, I forget. This is the Zig Sumi ink. I'm gonna go right over these pencils for now, but. And I'm really a big fan of inking involved pencil drawings like this, so. Maybe once we warm up on these guys, we'll just draw straight with the ink. Right in with the ink! Hold on a click. <laughs> P 
packages, 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 packages. It's the holiday season. It's the holiday season. And the packages come. And Steven streams. It's the holiday season. Thank you, Las Vegas. Bad bad bo bad bo Calm down, dog. Is that the FBI calling? FBI open up? What must you guys think of me? That my doorbell gets buzzed and you think it's the FBI. What accurate things about me must you all think? Dog, don't you bark. Shh. Go to bed. Go to bed. Fanny, go to bed. Is it really that important to know anatomy or is it okay to draw what you actually see? It's only important to know anatomy if you're a total nerd. Like if you wanna be a nerd, if you want everybody to know you're a nerd, if you want your best friends to find out you're a nerd, if you want girls to know you're a nerd, if you want your family to know you're a nerd, if you want your future employers to know you're a nerd, if it's really important to you personally for your future employers to wanna slam your face in a locker, over and over and over and over again, you nerd, you should learn your anatomy. If you're not a nerd, and if you don't want to be understood to be a nerd, and it's not important to you to be a total, irredeemably, insufferably nerdy person, then you don't need to learn your anatomy. Look, listen to me, honest answer, listen to me. Listen to me when I tell you. It depends what kind of work you wanna make. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you just because I'm an anatomy freak and I know my anatomy really well. I'm not going to lie to you to just increase my clout and tell you that you need to learn anatomy and if you don't learn anatomy, you're not a badass. It's just not true. If the work that you want to do is mostly people in full body costumes, you know, you you understand your artistic goals and you're like, all right, the main thing I want to draw is, I don't know, a comic where everybody's wearing these Belle Epoque, huge ballroom gowns and floofy outfits and all that. Does it sound like it's important to learn anatomy? No. And it isn't. It isn't. It's important. It's always going to be important to learn general proportions. It's always going to be important to learn general proportions for characters. And you'll be able to apply your anatomy learnings in some way. But is it going to be the most vital thing? No. It's like they're covered in costumes. Learning the costumes is more important. So it depends what you want to do. I'm smudging this drawing horribly, but I'm just in my sketchbook, so it don't matter.
Are art books necessary? Nothing's necessary in this world, Mizubi. Nothing's necessary. Nothing's necessary except love, sweet love. Nothing in this world is necessary except love, sweet love. One day love will find you, break those chains that bind you. You know I still love you, though we touched and went our separate ways. If he ever hurts you, true love won't desert you. You know I still love you, though we touched and went our separate ways. I still love you, babe. And oxygen, oxygen is necessary. Oxygen is not necessary. You are wrong. Repeat, oxygen is not necessary. And to anyone who doesn't believe that, I encourage you to test it. And you just go right on, you just go right on and you test it. Well, you just go right on and you test that, dude. Mama. A boy at school watching a man on a YouTube stream and he say you ain't got breed be alive. Well, honey, that's just not true. You can't be listening to any stupid little artist who's sitting there on YouTube drawing goblin. Can't just go ahead and trust that. But him and him goblins, they were so nice, mama. Billy Ray, you are the stupidest motherfucking child I've ever had. Shut the fuck up. I don't know what. You think I have any idea? Emmanuel Godson says, yo, yo, Stephen, my man, love from my shed in Dublin. <laughs> I don't know why that's tickling me so much. Cheers from New York, Emmanuel. That buoyant, right? Yeah, he's not. He's just not. Carpet Muncher. <laughs> Carpet Muncher says, speaking of goblins, try drawing one of yours, Stephen, and now it's my D&D &D character, LOL. It's an honor. Happy to be an integral part of your fantastic imaginings.
Mom, I'm there to mean goblin stream of man said I get the course. Billy Ryan buying you no goddamn six hundred forty dollar course. You still get, get out of my kitchen, Billy Ray. I tend to kick animals in the gonads, depending on how high off the ground their dangly ugly bits are. What is happening in this art stream? What is happening in this art stream right now? Don't eat yellow snow. Pee in the snow. Steven, I've been copying prints from the masters lately. Is that somewhat useful or am I wasting my time? Copying is always useful. It's not a waste of time. You're checking out the kinds of solutions somebody else got it. And you're mining for Eurekas. Sometimes you can only understand how another artist was thinking if you try to retread the same lines that they put down. Now I was actually used to making up fancy sounding sentences like that for my audience. They didn't know how much time I spent beforehand writing them, just so that I could pretend that they were common sort of off the cuff extemporaneously. In fact, even this sentence I actually carefully wrote hours before stream and I keep in a large document called things to say on stream that make me sound smart. Unfortunately, this time, it did not work out as planned because spontaneously and quite unexpectedly, I began to narrate my own internal monologue. Fish flops with the 10 SGD. I wish I could say that this was a surprise, but Fish Flops' benevolence is basically legendary at this point, so can't say I'm surprised. Fish Flops says, I usually sleep to your streams since it's quite late here. And during the last one, I dreamt of you telling me about the beauty of elliptical curves, only to find out that it autoplayed to math lectures. Well, Fish Flops, that started out really nice, but it got pretty dark once I became associated with my true enemy mathematics. That's a shame to hear. Shame to hear. Yeah, don't let it happen again. I want to I wanna stay as far away from numbers as possible, both in my personal life and when I am present in the dreams of others. So please try to keep those worlds separate, fish flops. 
You know, I don't want to come off too uh, reprimanding when you just literally voluntarily gave me money for no good goddamn reason, but here we are. Here we are. He gave me money for no good reason And I was mean to him for no good reason I suppose when bad reasons meet nothing's good Ooh. Fish flops come back to me I didn't mean to be mean, I'm sorry Fishy floppy please Come back to me. I know, I know you love it when daddy sings. I know whenever daddy sings, you've got to come say hello. I know, I know. It's just that nobody understands. They're not even hearing the real deal. They're hearing it all bullshit, like all compressed by the stream. They don't know how beautiful it sounds when it's uncompressed and real in person with the acoustics of the room. It's just overwhelming. They just don't understand. Ready a room at the Hotel California. I know you love it. I know. I know. I know. I Go on, get Eddie. Go on, get Eddie. What? I already walked you early. Go, beat it. You're fine. Jesus. I'm covered in fucking dog hair. Oh, it's going in the ink bottle. No. That's going to be a problem later. Go, on. Go to bed. Go to bed. The real star. The dog is so simple. She's very simple. She's very simple. There's just two things she loves. Food and world-class singing. <laughs> She's a very simple dog. She has a taste for stinky dog treats and an irrefutably refined palate for music. For her, it's like, it's Bombs, Whitney Houston, and her dad. Top three. dog hair on my face now. Man, some of these people are here straight over from modern, modern day James stream. Do you guys have like no life? Look, people, what do you mean no life? Honestly, Pepper Wolf, what do you mean no life? What is more interesting than watching people draw goblins? I ask you. What is more interesting? What is more interesting? Pepper Wolf, what do you, no life. This is life. This is like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna watch the Kardashians? Huh? That would be a life? I bet that's what you think is a life, huh, Pepper Wolf? What are you gonna do? Race cars at speed? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Take corners like you're at Le Mans? What's your plan? That's life? Vroom, vroom? Beat, beat? Wrong. Of course this is a good way to spend your life. This is creativity. And when you're watching me do it, it's creativity operating at the highest level. So I don't know where you get off, but I hope it's at this spot.
Don't do it, dog. Control yourself. Remember your training. I swear to God, when she runs off to the other room to bark at dogs on the street from her perch, sometimes I tell her, remember your training, and she doesn't do it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you that's really happening. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm getting some ugly intersections of lines here because I don't have a plan. But you know, they don't need to flow so gracefully. I mean, you look at like a Sergio Topi. I mean, look, his lines, they insert gracefully, but I mean, they really, you can find ways to make them work when they're sort of overlapping in all sorts of different directions. I gotta remember that. That didn't work. seeing if I could get some splatter by blowing down the barrel of the nib. No ear, Steven, is that a Freudian slip? No, it's not Freudian at all. I openly hate ears. I don't actually, ears are super fun to draw. Modern day James, my dear friend, how are you? How you doing, buddy? Everybody's saying that everybody in my chat right now is just from your stream. That they just flowed over here after you ended yours. Everybody's saying that my chat is just modern day James stream sloppy seconds. That is disgusting. I can't believe how many people are saying that. It's a vile way to characterize my stream. Own the same type of pen as you, Steven. Yay! Kapoosh, kapoosh. That was fireworks, in case you were confused. I'm amusing myself by AI image prompters crying foul that people are stealing their work. Ah, yes, the irony runs thick with them, doesn't it? Oh, yes, they don't care about copyright until they have something to copyright. <laughs> wow, whoever would have thought that their argument was completely fallacious and specious? I never would have guessed.
No, you don't say. I, had n I never would have guessed that they don't have the courage of their convictions and that their entire belief system is based on bad assumptions. Go figure. Take the dog for a walk, please. He wants that. No, his her usual walk time is around now, but because of stream, I did it early, so she's fine. Don't believe her lies, as I like to tell my wife. That's what we say to each other. Whenever either of us uh, walks the dog or feeds the dog without the other seeing, we always tell them, I fed her, don't believe her lies. By the way, really funny talking to AI artists, and they're all dumbfounded when you explain that they're training the next, the text generators as well. Yeah, I, um, seems pretty clear. It's like they built this thing out of data. Every time you use it, you give them more data. These are data people, their whole, business model is based on data. You think they haven't noticed that there is a huge archive of new data sitting there of all of the prompts you're picking of what you want to see? You think, you think they haven't noticed that? Okay. I gotta tell you, I really, uh, in this new attempt, you know, I haven't tried inking with a dip pen probably back since like the last time I did a full Inktober, which was probably like 2015 or something like that. So it's been going on 17, uh, 17, like seven years now or something. I think that's probably the last time I gave them an earnest shot. And um, I'm, I'm actually liking it for the first time. I actually really like inking with it now. I never used to like it. I would use it, sort of struggle with it to get particular effects on some ink drawings, but I never liked it. Now I find myself liking it. I think I'm finally like crossing the threshold with it. Now I just gotta get good at it because uh, I'm definitely not, I don't have enough mileage with it. I gotta get good at it. Let me fix my I know the text data is easier to collect than your fucking prompts. Yeah, it's freaking wild. I, it has been interesting to see that at least one of my um, more dystopic predictions from my video has come true. There's now, um, people have caught on that you can ask the GTP3 chat models to write your prompts for you and it gets you better results than a lot of people can get on their own. It's like, yeah, well, that just make perfect sense, don't it? You just type into one of these chat pots. Uh, what is it? You ask it a question like, um, give me a prompt for mid-journey AI that makes a picture of a woman in a boat and then it just spins it off for you and then you just plug that right in. And there's already like for-profit services that are like, oh, making prompts is hard. No, damn, it's so hard to know how to do it right. It's like we our new prompt AI, you just kind of tell it what you want and we'll design your prompts for you. Cool, Edmano. Hey, Edmano. Don't write your prompts yourself, dog. Check out promptfoundry.com. It's the way easier way, man. This has been helpful, homie. Helpful homie was a character that one of my good friends and I used to do at work when we would go over to each other's uh, screens and, um, and give each other advice. 
It's just like giving each other notes and crits just became way more fun if we did that stupid voice and very racist character. So it'd be like, hey man, did you know that if you double click the layer and then send it to blend app gray, and then you put that on a screen layer over your current line layer, it'll sort of like give you a perfect channels mask, you know? This has been helpful, homie. Really strange the level of disconnect between us, so between you and who? You mean between you and the AI community? I mean, they're just, you know, sort of by definition, the vast majority of AI artists are going to be coming from just a completely different direction than us, you know? It's like, this stuff is five months old. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's just their new favorite toy that they've really only cared about for the past six months, you know? It's like, it's just gonna produce different mindsets and different levels of investment, things like that. Like if you weren't doing art literally a year ago, how's this become such an ingrained part of your identity? You see, exactly, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. That is exactly what I'm saying. You beat me to it. Because you're very smart. Did you see it make a prompt for Starry Night by Van Gogh? It was perfect? No, I gotta check that out. Ooh, it sends a chill right down my spine. Next course, Ink from Imagination, and we'll never get the design course. Man, that'd probably be... That'd get some tattoo artists in, wouldn't it? Hmm. Let me file that under my good business ideas folder. <laughs> Hi, what kind of inks do you use? This is Zig, Zig Sumi ink. I, I would show the bottle better, but it's, I would tip the ink. It says Sumi ink 60. It's, it says both Kuratake and Zig. I take it Zig is like a sub line, Kuratake is the main manufacturer. My Facebook feed is already filling up with AI stuff. I can see what you said about the optics of art and it's very scary. Yeah, dude, I mean, I, I said that because it's already happening to me. You know, I, I found I can't like, um, even though I know I'm, I'm wrong and that I'm sort of, and that I'm being paranoid, I've like, 
I can't just like look at Art Station without thinking about it. Uh, it's like, it's in there, it's in the back of my head. I'm like, did they really make this, <laughs> you know? It's like, is it a lie? They wouldn't admit to it, why would they? Because there, there is plenty of stuff that's on there that's AI. Let's say there's plenty of stuff on there that's clearly AI and the person's not admitting to it. And then that makes you wonder how much stuff is on there that isn't clearly AI, but is. It definitely affects the optics. And if it's messing me up like that, you know, someone who's been in this world and has a discerning eye for art, uh, imagine what it's gonna do for the perception from the world at large, you know? I talk about this a lot in my, um, in the chat that I had with Mashe Kuchiara. So if you're interested in that side of it, when Mashe posts that, you guys will probably wanna check it out. Skin printer. Has drawing art been a large part of your life even before learning it in school? Yep, I was always into it. I woke up worrying about AI art last night. It's time to take a breather. You gotta step away. I got there briefly. I had to unplug and stop updating myself on the news about it. You just need a break. You need a sweet ass break. You gotta be like, whoa, that break is sweet. And your friends will be like, holy crap, you took that break? And you'll be like, hell yeah, I took that break. <laughs> Damn. Shit, man, how'd a loser like you take a break like that? I guess the major positive is that it'll all be replaced by AI prompting AIs and then it'll be a flood of garbage. Yeah, I don't, I mean, that'll be a positive in that that'll sort of stop a lot of the arguing, but um, that'll sort of be one of the darkest periods for art in general, I think. 
I don't know. I mean, at that point, we really need to restructure completely how we consume and distribute art so that we um, know when we're dealing with real stuff, fake stuff. It's like we're going to have to restructure things so that, I don't know, it's more, God, it's hard to even guess, like more in person, like seeing each other more, going back to in-person galleries or something like that. I have no earthly idea, but it'll be dark times. I need to get my whole... Oh, you stay over there. You come over here. You zoom out. All right, you zoom out. Now you stand over there. Now you come over here. Okay, then you... All right, good. Sorry, I'm worried I'm getting ink all over my camera. Steven, what pens or brushes recommended for ink? I mean, I'm not a big ink guy. Like, I don't do refined, finished work with ink. I just like to sketch with it. But um, brush pens are nice. You know, you don't need anything fancy. I use the disposable ones from um, uh, Pentel all the time. Uh, dip pens like this are, are cheap. You know, I mean, a nib like this is only like a dollar or something like that. Um, this is just a plastic piece of crap. These are... Nico G nibs. If you just type in G nib or G pen, um, tons of manufacturers make their version of a G pen. It's just a very flexible, um, kind of scratchy pen nib, but you can get packs that have all sorts. Um, I love fountain pens. I love my, my, my Pilot Lucina fountain pen. I've done a lot of stuff for the channel with that. That's this one. It gives you a more consistent line. It's not quite as flexible as a, an isolated nib pen, but um, it's just for sheer simplicity and it feels nice. I love drawing with these tools. Have you ever tried doing some Lin Ligne Claire stuff? Like Franco-Belgian artists, or is that not something you'd be into? I'm not familiar with uh, that style or that artist, if that's an artist's name. I might be into it, but I'm not yet because I'm not familiar with it. I mean, I mostly do what I like doing, you know? There's a lot of stuff that I like, that I love looking at, but there's very little that I'm interested in putting the time into drawing. But just something I talk about a lot with students is knowing the difference between just what you're a fan of and then what you're actually interested in making part of your work, because they are distinct. And surprisingly enough, when we're starting out or confused, it's easy to think that we're supposed to do everything that we like, you know, like, um, oh, well, you know, I love seeing pictures with color, so I have to be a color master. It's like, maybe you, you like seeing it, you know, you're still a person, you know, you can just be a fan of art, but you might just not be interested in working in color, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm so bummed about drawing lately. Been practicing 2.5 years and still suck. I'm also questioning what type of art I want to do. It's influenced by my inability to make the things I want. Frustrated as fuck. Well, Rolundub. Rolundub. 
rolling dub. There's many people in here who can sympathize with you, myself included. It's not easy. And it really, there's few feelings worse than feeling that you've been putting a lot of effort into something for a long time and it's just not paying back. It's horrible. It's horrible. I know that pain. I've been there. Don't give up. You know, the, the rate of progression in art is just, it's different from person to person and it is simply not promised, you know? You don't get to find out if you're gonna be a quick learner or if you're going to be a slow learner, if it's gonna take you 15 years or four. You just, you don't find out until you're on the other side, you know, unfortunately. And that's one of the reasons that art is so hard to explain, to teach, that it's the reason that it's still a mysterious job or skill to gain in an era where just about everything else has been demystified and nothing feels truly mysterious. Art holds fast. It refuses to be easily understood. It refuses to be easily understood. So it's part of the beauty of it, but to live through it is truly, truly, truly upsetting. I understand. Don't give up. Don't give up. We won't let you give up. When the harpies of despair call to you, we will tie you to the mast and stick honey wax in your ears to make sure that you cannot hear their alluring song. We, your faithful friends on this ship, will do this for you. Hey Steven, what size nib is that? Um, I don't know. This is just the Nico G nib. I don't think the G nibs come in different sizes, do they? The ones that I know, there's just like the big three guys that make them like Nico and Kuratake and it's just a standard size, I thought. Maybe someone who, you know, this isn't really my usual tool so someone who's more knowledgeable on this stuff than me could maybe tell you which size i'm using here it's about it's got like an inch sticking out from the nib holder y'all concerned about pens just get out there and draw especially in the age of the machines Get out there and draw. For real, Nicholas says, I have a really tough question, at least for me. My mentor has given me some tasks to do for the week and I can't do as many as I want or none of them because I have a hard time doing the things wrong. Do you have any thoughts on this? I want to be consistent, but I think this struggle is holding me back a lot. Um, that's a nuanced question because if it comes down to volume in terms of how it pertains to education, um, it's a useful corrective, but I don't personally agree with it all the time. Like if, if you had a mentor or a teacher who was consistently basing their measurement of your success on pure volume, just how much of something you can output on a deadline. Maybe if you were only a career focused person, that might be useful because it's training you in a sort of mulish kind of a way to always hit your deadline. But if that's really consistent, if that's not just like a prescriptive period that lasts maybe like a year to get you used to being disciplined, um, 
I would push back. I would specifically tell them like, I get that this is useful, but I also really feel I need to practice taking my time on something. I need to practice making something as good as I can possibly make it. And um, people have different pedagogies as teachers, but um, if, if somebody told me that, well, I mean, I, I would have already told them that was important that they should do it, but I would absolutely listen and I would let them pursue um, that different form of learning and of interacting with art. And personally for me, if they don't go for it, if they're just like, no, that's not what it's about, they wouldn't be for me. I, I wouldn't, it's not, the, it's not the mentor I would want, you know? I would consider getting out of that relationship, but that's me. sketch no pencils this time I'm just gonna draw oh I forgot to do his ear Hey Steven, any advice for someone losing interest in the subject matter of a project midway? Um, set some time aside to try to fall in love with it again. Just put it on the to-do list. I mean literally set aside time. For real, on your to-do list, if you don't have one, start doing one. Put a two-hour time block on your to-do list and just write for the two-hour time block. Try to fall in love with this subject again and just do it. Read books, watch videos. Um, write about it, journal about it, do whatever it takes. I've done that many, many times, mostly on jobs. It feels really bad to work on a really difficult job that you're just like completely bored by and don't agree with the subject matter. So many, many times have I, um, many, many times have I set aside time to try to hypnotize myself into being interested in it again. Yeah, or just ask chat GT GPT. Is it GPT or GTP? I, I always get it confused because my tongue just insists on saying it one way only. It doesn't care what the correct order is.
Yo, Steven, haven't been on for a while. Hope y'all well. Hi, Theodora. Good to hear from you. I'm good. I just finally sealed the deal on a new apartment, so I'm finally moving. I've been trying to move for like eight months. <laughs> it's finally over. Now I just need to actually move, which is always a bummer. But man, I'm feeling so relieved after that. I mean, that was taking up so much time and messing with my schedule so much because I'd have to like randomly run off to see places before they disappeared off the market and stuff like that. I'm so glad to have finally picked a place, found a place. How are you doing, Theodora? Bigger as well, I hope you bet. You bet. I think I'm gonna make a little dedicated spot in the new apartment to finally put up like a permanent easel where I can just paint there, not have to put the whole thing away and take it back out again whenever I want to paint. So I think I'll make a permanent painting station. I think I've got enough room now and the orientation would work in the studio room that um, I've been wanting to do some really big pencil drawings lately. I think I might um, tape some paper to the wall of my studio room opposite my digital setup and um, I might start doing some streams of me working on something much bigger, much, much bigger. Looking over my shoulder instead of overhead. Exciting possibilities for the stream, that's for sure. Have you ever drawn on draw pile with other people before? I feel like it could be something fun. I have a little bit. Well, not on draw pile, but um, Mag Magma Studio. When was the last time I did that? I think on, um, there's an old stream on Ahmed's channel where like, I think James, were you on that one? It was like you, me, Med, uh, Thomas Chamberlain Keen. I think a couple other people we were doing like a Bloodborne collab gym. I asked you this question because after a while, drawing two years, I started to have 
this mentality of I can't make mistakes anymore. Now I work with it and just realize it yesterday. Yeah, you just got to work with it. And you can always make mistakes. You should always give yourself that permission because uh, there is no other option. <laughs> there is no such thing as perfect art. You've never experienced perfect art. The idea of being a perfectionist is a lie for you to be a perfectionist, you would have need to experience perfection so that you could try to achieve it. No one has ever experienced that. It is not real. That was on my channel, actually. It was dope. We need to do more of those. That's right. It was on yours. It was on yours. Now I remember. Just sketching with the pen now. Not doing anything serious, just... I prefer not to get like... I prefer to not like ink things. You know, when people say ink it, there tends to be the implication of like sort of tracing a pencil drawing carefully. I'm not really interested in doing that with ink. I'm interested in um, just drawing freely with it. fun to use it just like you would use a pencil. I've noticed you move from one drawing to the next really quickly. Are you brainstorming while you draw or working from reference? How so many ideas so fast? Uh, I'm not working from reference right now. Um, usually if I work from reference, I work slower. I spend more time on one idea. But um, yeah, I'm, really, I'm not really brainstorming either. I'm literally just drawing for the fun of it. That's it. I move... Uh, I move to the next drawing once I'm bored of the one I'm doing. Just following the impulsive feeling that it's fun. Nothing special going on here. You know, no rules, no structure, no false expectations. Just doodling. You know, if I'm trying to get anything right now, it's just more mileage with the uh, dip pens and doodling mileage was a significant amount of my mileage with pencil and many other mediums. So 
I trust that it works, you know. I don't need to be going towards a particular target for it to be beneficial. Steven, I need relationship advice. How do I incorporate eldritch demon drawings into my love life? I mean, if you if honest, if you show your eldritch demon drawings to someone and they're not interested, it's just that lets you know they're not for you. You know? It's really not all that complicated. I mean, my wife fell in love with me because of my eldritch demon drawings. And every time we fight, Every time I do or say something stupid, every time we're in a huff with each other, I just show her a new Eldritch Demon and I know forgiveness is coming. You know, I'll show her this or some Lovecraftian monstrosity, some horrible abomination that's all teeth. She'll just kind of melt a little bit and she's like, baby, how can I be mad at you? Oh, you're such a charmer. You always know what to say. Are there any ways to avoid the glare of lead pencil when drawing? Um, theoretically, you could wear polarizing sunglasses and put polarizing filters on your work lights. There is actually a way to do it, but um, don't be crazy. <laughs> the glare makes it beautiful. It makes it look like a glistening jewel instead of like a reproduction. The glare lets you know that you're holding the real thing and not a print. I love the glare. I think it's beautiful. And I'm someone who records their drawings and I still love the glare. So your art is all preemptive apologies? That's a beautiful way to put it, Nick. That's a beautiful way to put it. Wow. Yeah, man, I mean, now that I've heard it, it's like, absolutely. I feel like you just wrote my artist statement for me.
Thanks, Dan. I'm going to start a new sketchbook of cars. Man, cars are hard to draw, huh? I didn't mean that to psych you out. I'm just saying they're a classically difficult thing to draw. Don't get psyched out. I was kidding. Cars are easy to draw. Dude, cars are so easy to draw. It's like, LOL, dude. It's like, I can't spit on a piece of paper without accidentally drawing a perfect car. It's like the wheels are perfect ellipses. The perspective on the hood is perfect. The headlights are in perfect perspective. Drawing cars is so ridiculously easy. That's why I don't do it. It's like, it's not hard enough. That's why I don't draw them. It's like, I'm into the challenging stuff, not the easy stuff in art. You know what I'm saying? Bro, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> Come on, dog. I think you know what I'm saying, dog. I think we all know what I'm saying, dog. Nick says, apologies if I overstepped. I forget already what you overstepped with. If you offended me, Nick, you'd be the first person on stream to offend me. That's a worthy cause, don't you think? When is Jesus coming? I miss him. Yeah, Jesus used to come in this stream. Whatever happened to Jesus? I haven't thought about Christ in a bit. Now that you mention it, it's like, when's the last time the Lord of Hosts was in here? It's been a while since we've had a a drop in by the Lamb of Lambs.
drawing with my sheep. Jesus, welcome. Good to see you, Christ. We were getting a little worried about you. We were like, damn, when was the last time, when was the last time Jesus died for our sins, dude? <laughs> Earl Poole says, can we talk about AI drawing? Mizubi Art said, no, bye-bye AI. No, we just can't. We cannot talk about it. Why would you ever think I would want to talk about AI art? Come on. Come on. Me? I got no interest in this stuff. Me? Never touch this stuff. Did you shave? I did. I did, dude. I shaved when I had to go meet the uh, landlord for the apartment that I wanted. It was like, you never know who you're going to get. <laughs> you never know what their vibe's going to be. So I was like, might as well play it safe. Clean myself up. My cat Levi watches this stream. He's getting violent recently, no connection, just saying.
He's listening intensely, intently. This isn't a joke, Stephen. <laughs> Hi, Stephen. Where would you start? Where would you start making your first money from getting tattoos? What? Suppose you have your current drawing skills are similar, but you just want to start making a living from it. You mean like giving tattoos? Um, I don't know. I'm not a tattoo guy. I actually have no idea. I don't know. If you want to be a tattooer, don't you have to like begin with an apprenticeship? Tattoo people, please correct me. I have no idea. Tattoos are one major part of art that I've never touched. I have absolutely no contact with them. I don't have any tattoos, never got never gotten one, never designed one. I wish I could give more advice there, but that's just something I have no experience with. Usually have to apprentice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did I smudge all of this when I turned the page? Yeah, it did. It did rub off from one side to the other. Whatever. When's the last time a blank sheet of paper was actually intimidating to you? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's been a bit. I mean, I don't take I don't take any individual drawing too seriously. I try to always keep in mind that it makes total sense if a drawing doesn't work out and that I can always restart it, I can always scrap it, and try to plan it better. Um, and I've done that many times, you know? There's nothing wrong with just giving it another go from scratch, so. I don't know, there's really no good reason to be afraid of a blank piece of paper. It's like, most paper isn't all that expensive. <laughs> it's like, if it goes wrong, you get another one. You can always reduce your intimidation by planning the drawing better.
Stephen, what character designing, when character designing, do you prefer the silhouette approach or the thumbnail sketch approach? Um, I rarely do true thumbnails because uh, I usually design characters digitally. So silhouette, I suppose. But I don't really, um, I don't really just draw the raw silhouette like as a blacked out shape either. I just keep the silhouette in mind while I sketch freely. A lot of people seem to think that it's like you have to draw with like a Sharpie or with the, the hard brush and just do it with only black. And it's like, that's what it means to design the silhouette. It's like, that's actually just a medicinal, a medicinal tool to clue you into what, you're, what the silhouette means and how it works and what can be wrong with it. Once you understand that stuff, you don't have to actually draw it that way. You can just draw freely. It's just, are you keeping the silhouette in mind? Are you keeping all those principles in mind? Of course, if you just, you know, personally, you have trouble seeing those things with your mind's eye, unless they're actually down on the page, then that's different, but you can just draw freely. My goal is always to just draw as freely as possible with not many limits and to just kind of get every form of drawing a little bit closer to just being in my sketchbook. So, um, affectations like that, like, you know, putting a little rail on myself like that. I've never really, that's not really super appealing to me. Steven, how do you plan for a big art piece when you don't have much time to draw every day? I tend to lose interest when I create something on a large time frame, and I only end up doing big pieces that I'm proud of like twice a year. I just think that's natural, you know? If, if your drawing time is very limited, it's, I think it's almost inevitable that you're going to kind of go for the juice when you actually sit there doing it, when you actually get to sit down and do it. And the juice is often a new drawing, just enjoying the feeling of um, spinning something off is just, there's not, there's few things more exciting than that. So I think it's almost inevitable. I mean, you got to really, if you want to fight that, you got to really care about the pieces that you're making. You've got to have a fire under your ass, like you, I don't know, hate your job or something like that. And you really want to put together a portfolio. Um, otherwise, just work in little bits and pieces every day you know you can plan it for just um let's say you only have an hour after work or something like that just plan the big piece or work on the big piece for just 10 minutes and then give yourself the other 50 minutes to do whatever you want to do a new sketch to sort of just uh dilettante around and not really focus on the thing that you quote unquote should be focusing on and it doesn't matter if it's only 10 minutes out of the hour that you have uh, over weeks, months, or even years, those 10 minutes will add up and you'll do a lot of damage on the big drawing. So the, there's no mystery to like how to divide your time. It's just about um, committing to a system, any system that lets you get through it. But yeah, just don't put unrealistic expectations on yourself, you know? You're tired. Drawing is supposed to be fun. It's like, it's not your fault that because of those situations, you're going to want to do a new, fun, lighthearted sketch when you sit down to draw. So 
don't expect something too crazy from yourself when that's obviously the way your brain's gonna go. So instead you say, all right, I get 50 minutes to just have fun, but 10 minutes for the big thing, 10 minutes for the big thing. Don't stick your tongue out at me. It's too early. It's far too early. It's far too early for dinner. No, go to bed. Don't stick your tongue out at me all hungry. Papa Dealy, you're the one. Time for you and me to have some fun. Papa Dealy, you're the one for me. All right, go on, get out of here. Go on, get out of here. She gave me the loudest grunt when she got back into bed. Hmm, Steven, what do you think would weird an art mentor out? I am not gonna tell you that. <laughs> you have any idea how crazy it would be for me to implicate myself in a situation like that? I don't know what you're what you plan on doing with my weaponized weirdness. Come on. Absolutely no way. Don't weird your mentor out. Just do the homework. You better lock your phone and look at me when you're
Nick Ravioli says, how do I know if when my darkest darks are dark enough? Um, it really is up to you. I mean, um, cause you can key a whole picture by lifting the darkest darks, you know, you can, um, you, you can see Monet did this all the time in his, uh, uh, time of day studies. Um, if you make sure the darkest dark is like three steps above pure black, that'll always make the image feel like it's being seen through some fog or at some great distance. All else the same. So it really is up to you. I tend to, you know, because I'm rarely going for effects like that, I tend to always assume my dark accents are going to be uh, the blackest black that I can make with that medium. But it's not the most exciting choice. It's just one that works. I can just key my whole, the whole value range of a picture off of that. It's like dark accent, pure black, ambient occlusion and that dark accent is usually like the contact shadow where two things are touching right ambient occlusion a little bit lighter than that overall value of the cast shadow a little bit lighter than that uh overall value of the form light uh of the form shadow aka the reflected light uh, a little bit lighter than that half tones a little bit lighter than that in the light and then the light lighter than that, the form light, and then the specular reflection lightest of all. Again, it's not the most exciting or um, particular lighting situation, but I can repeat that relationship of values across the modeling factors over and over and over again and get good results. And it's never about absolute values. You know, I don't, I don't teach with um, value scales or anything like that because um, Using particular measurements for values only works if you're doing the same lighting situation over and over and over again, which is very rare. So it tends to fall apart, that kind of teaching, when you need to do something creative. So what values anything should be, not just the dark accent, but the value of any particular modeling factor is always a relative comparison. Corgi Scarab says, hello, Sir Stephen, Valiant Cavalier against machine art. I've been sharing your video essay everywhere. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm glad it's out there doing some work. Truly. Steve, how does the AI remember all of those images without taking a large space? Does it only remember the repeated elements and saves it once? The how there is very interesting. Um, what's happening is that the latent space that the AI produces is a lower dimensional representation of a higher dimensional reality. I didn't make that up, that's how they describe it. The how is the problem, right? The how does it design a latent space such that it is an appropriate low dimensional representation of a higher dimensional reaction that's ro reality that's robust enough that you can actually use it and generate images from it. The how there is mysterious and that seems to be true with most machine learning that that particular little dark corner is sort of opaque to human beings. You know, we know the machines can do it. We know the inputs, we know the outputs, but we don't exactly understand what the machine is sort of teaching itself in the middle. Um, so the latent space is sort of a, a dimensional space and the dimensions, there's many, it's not like three dimensions. It's like, there's all sorts of dimensions generated within the latent space and those dimensions are the qualities of the pictures that it is trained on so um we're really beyond my area of expertise here but that like you know we're this is a cartoon right but it's like in this direction from the latent space, it's like, it's more dog, it's more house, it's more cat, it's more painterly, it's more photorealistic. Like those are the dimensional axes within the latent space. And all it needs is those axes. And that's what you search. I wanna be clear, it's you're searching the latent space. All of the generations are already captured within it. Um, 
you search the latent space using prompt and seed number to investigate what is at a particular coordinate of those different dimensions of those different axes and what is at that particular coordinate is the generation that it then produces it's very it's complicated stuff it's very difficult it's not my area of expertise i'm not a software engineer or a math guy um that's how uh that's one of the when i've had it explained to me that was one of the better ways to explain something that is just extremely complicated um i do want to point out there again for people who don't know um the models when they generate that latent space they are locked into that latent space that latent space has a particular shape and the model that is shipped is stuck like that and if you want to change the nature of that latent space you need to retrain the whole model from scratch so it is accurate to say that all of the possible generations within something like stable diffusion are already captured within the latent space so when you generate art through it what you're really doing is you're finding art in it it's more like you're placing an x on a map and that's why someone with the same seed number and the same prompt can find the exact same image if you give them the seed number and the prompt and in fact those things are so tightly mathematically correlated within these models that you can actually if you had the generated image and the seed number you could run the programs backwards and generate the prompt that would have produced that image um it's just hard objective mathematics and you search that potential space by using seed number and prompt which again you know for me it's like that is why it's so obvious to me that these things do not learn like us the the nature of their learning of machine learning is nothing like the nature of human learning and the argument that uh we shouldn't worry about these things or that what they're doing is okay is okay because that's just how we learn it's like two false assumptions there one um just because it could do something that learn something the same way that we learned it that doesn't that's not an excuse to allow it to do that thing because humans learn how to do plenty of unethical and infringing things and uh false premises number 2 is that no it does not learn like us and the nature of its learning would be utterly alien to you it's not at all how we learn How do you write it Stephen is it latent space no it's uh latent it's l a t e n t The latent space is a mystery well the I, I've talked to math people who it's not a mystery to them but it's they don't yet have good language to express it to those of us who can't just look at the math ourselves and understand it you know ah uh, the consequences of mathematical illiteracy Steven is there a perfect SEO generation machine hiding in those AIs in which you paint your piece input it and it gives you the perfect description for it there might be I don't know I um I would say that the fact that that's how it's being done would prevent in my book would prevent it from being perfect but
Do people really not understand that there's something to be said for the joy of knowing you made it? That you came up with it. Thank you, Taylor. Is there no merit for AI to be used as a tool for a smaller creator to pursue larger products without needing a whole creative team? Or is that just trumped by big companies replacing workers? Uh, I think unfortunately it, it probably will be, but it, it is of course, um, there is of course merit there, but not on the backs of um, ill-gotten data, you know? A different AI system, one that as of yet does not exist, that was uh, where its data was consensually collected and it was done ethically and everybody who wanted to be training the model wanted to be training the model um the merits there for creators and for independent studios and um anyone who just wants to use these things to make the process easier it's like the merit there is endless you know but no i don't think on um you know however nice it would be that anyone could make something that they want it just doesn't change the fact that it was done wrong you know it just doesn't i don't think any of us are entitled to particular modes of creative expression i mean we're all we're all entitled to creative expression but it's just we couldn't possibly be entitled to a particular quality level or a mode or a way of expression, you know?
Hi Zane, how's it going? Sometimes I think the arguments between ethical AI training and whether or not the AR is real art or good gets confused. Yes, stupidly confused. The waters are very muddy right now. All right, fun, fun time with the dip pen. All right, I'm gonna start getting ready to leave here. I'll stay on for a few more minutes. But I'm getting hungry. I had an early lunch today and I'm getting hungry, pickish. I'm gonna start cooking dinner, I think. Hey Steven, I don't know why it's awesome to draw along with your stream. I usually have this on while I wait for class, lol. You don't know why. It makes perfect sense. Camaraderie, friendship, relaxed art chat that isn't in your face. My completely incorrigible stupidity and inane nonsense. It's like, of course you love drawing along. The stream. Of course you love drawing along with the stream. Come on, come on. It's not an I don't know thing. We all know why. Just finished my piece too. Thanks for the chill drawing stream, Stephen. Oh, my pleasure. Oh, my pleasure. Hey, Stephen, thanks for everything you're doing with the AI discussion. Your video has been influential to many. Hey, I'm happy to hear it. I'm glad it's out there doing its work. I did not expect it to uh, go around as much as it did when I made it, you know. I'm, uh, I'm glad people are finding it useful. You know, keep educating yourself. Keep your eye on this stuff. I'm very glad that I've been able to get it on people's radars.
By the way, Stephen, watch your stream encourages working and pushing through. My experience in my art space is, is to not dwell on AI banter argument too long. Do the art, broadcast the art. Hell yeah. I mean, I, I got, you know, I'm pretty, pretty in this AI stuff. Um, having a lot of conversations about it. And, um, you know, obviously the video and just, well, you know, you guys get it. And there'll be more coming out soon more information and updates and a lot of the conversations that I've had will get posted and things like that but um as much as I'm in it you know I I have seen the importance of just uh it can't all be about that you know it's it's always about the art first so don't um you got to sort of claim responsibility for your mind and say all right there might be a part of that a part of my brain that needs to pay attention to that stuff, but I can't just let that take over everything. You know, it's not, we got to remember what we're fighting for here. You know, we need to maintain the fun and joy of making art. We need to keep the creative space, a ritual space of peace. You know, we can't abide by stress and anxiety becoming the dominant emotional valence of the creative ritual space we must avoid that at all costs so I definitely saw things were skewing out of balance for me early on there and uh, I just really chose to you know that can't be what this is about and I'm not gonna let that happen so I really do put it out of my mind whenever it feels like it would be maladaptive to linger on it I try not to get obsessed with thinking that I need to be perfectly updated on what goes on, because, you know, that's not exactly my responsibility as an individual, you know? I'm about making art, first and foremost. Also chipping in my thanks, Steven. Your video picked me up in a major way when I was feeling very low. Robbie Dunn, I'm super happy to hear that. I think for a lot of um, content creators like me, is that the phrase, is that the buzzword phrase these days? Uh, for a lot of creators like me, I mean, that's just the, um, the nicest thing we can hear, you know? And I consider it paying it forward because uh, I owe many thanks to so many people who made art tutorials and DVDs and then you know that was even before YouTube like but then once YouTube came out my god just I owe thanks to so many people who made content that motivated me and made me feel accompanied in dark long nights and in many states of emotional pain so I appreciate it I'm happy to be helping and um I consider that a duty of mine. That I do consider a duty of mine. And um, I consider it a duty because of how much, how much that helped me. Back in college, I used to fall asleep listening to Ian McCaig DVDs, Marco Djurjevic tutorial. I lived on that stuff. Couldn't resist one more little doodle. 
No, I had just said I was gonna leave, but that always just triggers me to do one more little last thing before I go, so I had to do a weird alien, right? You had any old VHS tapes by Glenn Vilpu? Um, I checked out a few from the Art Center Library back when I was in college. I don't have them anymore. But I, th I think uh, like every drawing instruction DVD um, they, they had in the school library, which is a huge amount, like they had every Nomon DVD that was ever released at the time, I systematically checked out each and every single one and um i listened to them all as this is they're really just at this time there just wasn't as much stuff on youtube as there is now and i wasn't really watching much youtube back then um so i systematically checked out every single video they had over the years and uh, i would listen to all of them while i worked They were my studio company. All right, everybody. I'm going to run. Thank you for hanging out. We did a bunch of sketches today. We started in pencil and then changed our minds and started doing the dip pens. I've been wanting to get more mileage with the dip pens, so here we go, dumping in the mileage, just sketching, 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 sketching. Oh yeah. Well, I'm tired now. When I do these later in the day streams, I always wind up tired. I'm usually energetic after a stream because I'm ending earlier in the day. Your alien is beautiful. Thank you. I love a beautiful alien. You know, just want to kiss aliens on the lips and stuff like that. You know, I want them to come get me in bed with their dead eyes. Owl looking bastards. I think I'm going to freak out. Mm -mm -mm. Lay hands on me, my alien brother. There's so much here for you to probe. So much. My mom hates those jokes. She's like, Eho. Why do you have to talk about the probing? It's like, Mom, you have to be honest on the internet. People really react to authenticity. She's like, Eho. Why that kind of authenticity? And I'm like, Let's save the notes for when you have 80,000 subscribers on YouTube. Mom. Hit me back then. Okay? How does that sound? Ay, hijo, ¿por qué, por qué the probing? ¿Por qué tienes que hablar de eso, de, del probing? Okay, Mom. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, Jason P. Goodbye, Corey Kroom, <laughs> Kroom Knocker. Goodbye, Arenola Dominguez. Goodbye, Gabby N64. Goodbye, Ascended. Goodbye, Chris Maycock. Goodbye, Saman Kucher. Goodbye, Zella Faye. Did I ever say goodbye to Corey Kroom Knocker? I think, I think I did. Goodbye, Levi. Goodbye, Saman. I already said Saman Kucher. Mr. Sun, Rappy. Corgi Scarab, On Call, Levi. I think that's everybody. Goodbye, Oxion. Did I say bye to Jason P? I might have. Stay.
Stephen, a friend told me that one of my bonobo portraits was regenerated and used on a book cover. Litigate, litigate, litigate. It's time to take the fight to them. I hate to hear that, Reynola. That sucks. Look into it. See, uh, see what's going on. Your friend may be right, may be wrong, but try to find it. Try to find that book cover. I mean, if it, if it's listed on like a um, like a self publishing site or something like that, or Amazon, you should be able to send an email, some sort of complaint, uh, providing proof that like, look, I made this, you know, and and if it looks too similar, they'll, I'm sure they'll react, they'll do something. So look at so look into it, look into it. There's not, you can do something there. All right, everybody, I'm going to run. Peace, everyone. Take care. I will see you soon. Oh, that's right. We're, we're getting off Friday, so maybe I'll see you tomorrow. I got to fit. Oh, wait, damn it. See, I'm not used to, I haven't, I'm not used to it yet that I'm moving it. I'm moving streams to Thursdays instead of Fridays, and I scheduled something for tomorrow. I scheduled two things for tomorrow. All right, we'll see about that. Maybe I'll stream on Friday. All right. I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon either way. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.